My name is Nolan Pillay. I am the CEO and founder of Straight Talk with Nolan. And I'm about to show you that life has not been easy for me. There's always ups and downs, but through my resilience, I've been able to become the CEO and founder. So here is my story. I call myself the 10 year old sales boy. And why do I call myself this? Well, you see, as a young boy, I used to go out every morning selling delicacies that my mom used to make. And the reason why we were selling these delicacies is so that we could have money to buy bread and buy food for the afternoon. And it meant very simply, if we did not make a sale, then we had no food to eat. But all was not lost, right? Because the school still provided sandwiches for us in the form of peanut butter or uh, jam sandwiches. And I was ever so grateful for this because it allowed me to fill my tummy. I remember going to school on a cold day with no shoes, no jersey, where my feet were like frozen. And it's because we couldn't afford it. We couldn't afford all the luxury that we have. I remember studying with a small candle like this. And man, this was not because of load shedding, no. It was because my parents could not afford to pay the electricity bill. Now, I went back in 2019 to my story when I was climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. I was using a small bowl of, like this, of water to brush my teeth. When I was growing up, the difference was it was ice cold water, but I was so grateful that I could still brush my teeth. My first job was as a PA. And you may think, personal assistant? Not at all. It's actually a Bowser boy someone who fills petrol into cars, checks the oil, checks the pressure, etc. So I was grateful that I was getting a job and I could get paid for it as well. I remember also selling biscuits on a street corner to get in extra cash. So this was part of my childhood growing up, poured wine a few years to my metric year. And you know, living in apartheid South Africa was not so easy at all. If, if I continued to play the victim mindset, I would not be where I am today. So I moved out from the self-pity environment and I decided I needed to work on myself. So in school, I was excelling at sports. I was sportsman of the year for three years in a row. And I was so happy that, okay, my sports was going well. My education I felt was also going well up until it came to exam time in 1989. I wrote my exams, I had studied hard for it and I knew I got this. I said to myself, Nolan, you got this. So I wrote my exams, waited a few weeks for the results. Back in the day, we had to go to the newspaper office and wait till midnight for the newspaper to be printed. So I get my copy of the newspaper. I'm going through it. I can't find my name. I call a friend over. I said, please come and check. Is, why is my name not appearing here? He says, no, sorry, I don't see your name. So this could only mean one thing, right? If my name is not there, it means I failed. So I decided to hang 10 and go to the school in the next morning and find out what's going on. So I go to the principal, I say, Mr. So-and-so, my name is not in the paper. Can you confirm or tell me what's going on? And he says, no, I'm sorry, you have failed. This was a stab to my heart. I was sad. I didn't know what to do. I was feeling more embarrassed. I was thinking what the community or what society would think of me, how they would laugh at me. So my home was about 300 meters away. As I'm walking down the road, there's only one thought in my mind, and that's suicide. That's correct. I attempted suicide. I attempted to kill myself, but God was on my side, and it really was not my time. So I got out of that patch, and in that same year, I spoke to a friend because I knew his dad worked at a factory, and I said, is it possible for me to get a job, any job? I will take anything. So he says, come to the, 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 the company the following Monday. I went there. There were a whole lot of us, easily about 50 of us. They called 10 of us in. And they said, okay, here's a job. You're now gonna become a packer and a sweeper. Wow, I was so grateful just for this opportunity. I was really grateful that I could start working. Six months down the line, during one of my night shifts, I used to work 12 hour shifts. There was a voice that came into my mind and the voice asked me a question. Nolan, is this where you want to be for the rest of your life? And my immediate answer was no. 
I decided I needed to take action and do something about this. So I started working overtime on weekends and I started to climb the ladder within the company to the point that I got transferred to Johannesburg, the city that I'm living in now, in the year 2000 as a technical engineering buyer. Now this was a game changer for me. The reason why I say it's a game changer is because it allowed me to get out of my comfort zone and do much better with my life. But I was still not satisfied with what I was doing. So when I asked myself the question, why was I not satisfied? The answer was very simple. I believed that I had so much potential within myself. Surely there was more to life. Surely I can do much more out there, live a much more purposeful life. So I decided, what's the next step in my career? I decided to pursue SAP consulting because I had been doing that for a few years, but I was not certified. Now here's the thing, although we were living in the 2000s, apartheid was still very much alive. The company that I worked for refused to send me on a five week course on SAP. So I decided that's okay. What I would do then is set an exam date and study every single day at my own leisure and go and write that exams and pass it. That's exactly what I did. Once I was certified, I could travel throughout the world, work for different companies and expose myself much more. I became an expert in SAP consulting. I was working for major corporates out there. I traveled to what, more than 20 countries already in that short space of time. I was connecting with people of different races, different cultures, different nationalities. It's a, it was amazing, it was a beautiful journey up until 2016. I had no contract. I'd been unemployed for 18 months of my life and I lost a lot of things, including friends. I lost a lot of money and life was not easy at all from that point. I was lying flat on my back, but guess what? I was still looking up at God. I still kept my faith, my belief. I still had the strong willpower that I can do so much with my life. And God really was on my side once again. In 2017, a friend gave me a call and he said, they're looking for an experienced SAP consultant. Are you wanting to join? If yes, forward me your CV. I will send it to HR and we'll take the next steps. Sent in my CV, got the job as a SAP consultant in another major corporate, one of the most, the biggest ones in the world, in fact. So I did that for a while up until June 2019. And this I call my beautiful destruction. Why? I was exposed to inhumane behavior. In a professional world, people were still treating me really bad. And this is when I decided I needed to leave the corporate, get out of there, and start coming back and teaching people about humanity, restoring humanity. Now, I just want to take you back to 2015. This is when I started my company, Straight Talk with Nolan. It was founded then, but I didn't do much with it because I was too comfortable in the corporate world. I was traveling twice a month internationally. I was earning a good salary. Why did I need to move? There was no reason, right? Any person will tell you, there is no reason to move when you have all of these benefits, all of these luxuries. And then I decided I needed to reignite Straight Talk with Nolan. So 2019, September, I launched the company officially and I said, I'm gonna take this to new heights. I'm gonna help people live a more purposeful life. I'm gonna restore humanity. And that's when it became so alive in me that I needed to kickstart Straight Talk with Nolan. There was so much more that I needed to do to people out there, live a much more purposeful life. And this is where we are going with the company. And I tell you what, it's a journey that's so beautiful. The amount of people that I'm connecting with, the people that I'm adding value to is unbelievable. I go to bed sleeping at night knowing that, hey, I have left somebody with an impression of increase. That's my goal now, and I'm excited to take this to the next level. And watch the space, because we are kickstarting into a massive, massive company. My moonshot is bold, very, very bold. It's to transform one million lives in Africa, starting with our teens and young adults, by enhancing their mindset, 
and thought process. You may wonder, wow, how are you going to get that done? Well, I've already started. I started with 179 students that are working with me because my key focus at Straight Talk with Nolan is on our youth. How many people out there are really leading our youth? There's so much of potential that they have, but who's leading them with their experience and their knowledge, right? So I want to live a life of purpose. I want to leave a legacy. What issues are facing our youth out there today? A lot of them have mindset issues. A lot of them have mental health issues. They have limiting beliefs. They have so much of limitations and fear within themselves. They don't know how to progress in life. There's a lack of opportunity. Why is the lack of opportunity out there for our youth? Because they're thinking from a mindset of scarcity. They're not thinking from a mindset of abundance. There's gender-based violence. They have low self-esteem. They have lack of direction and support. Not many of them are working towards goals that they should be working to. A lot of them, like myself included, we always lived to the goals that our parents installed in us. And what does it mean? It allows us not to live a life of purpose, something that we want to do, right? We're teaching you how to be resilient enough. Look at myself, right? I'm so resilient now because I've learned, I've put a lot of knowledge into myself. I realized that I would be a hypocrite if I sit back and watch this unfold in front of me. I decided I needed to do something about this. I gained all of this knowledge, all of this experience. Why do I need to hoard it and keep it to myself when I can use it and teach other people how to be the best version of themselves? I want to share this with as many people as possible with the one value add for me that is adding value to their lives, leaving everyone I come across with an impression of increase. You will notice if you go onto my website, Straight Talk with Nolan, you'll see I'm very connected with the deaf community. Why? How many of you have friends that are deaf? How many of you bother to learn sign language? So this is a community that we should not shun. They are such fantastic people. They have such huge aspirations and goals. Why not work with them? One of the goals that I wanted to do with the deaf community for 2021 is to climb three mountains. Yes, climb three mountains to create awareness and give the gift of hearing to a child. Imagine what a blessing that is. But unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we've had to move this out into the future. I'm working with universities and schools because I know the potential that our youth have. I believe in this generation. This is the generation that tells you directly to your face, I should not dislike somebody else because my parents or community says I should dislike them. I want to like every single one. I want to be human. So therefore, we are involved in so many youth programs, youth coaching programs. There's so much of potential we have and we want to explore this even further. So connect with us and we want to learn and teach as many people as possible. Now, part of the contribution that I did in 2019 as well is I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. First time, I climbed it. It took me six months of training, but my why was so big that it encouraged me to do this. What was the why? I was raising funds for girls in rural areas to have access to sanitary pads something that I believe is a right for every single girl. If we can put condoms in the male bathrooms, why can we not put sanitary pads in the toilets of the females? Why do they need to go and purchase this? So that is why I climbed that mountain and I conquered it because of that. I'm involved in a lot of community workshops, a lot of feeding programs and charity programs. But like I always say, I don't want to just feed somebody. I want to teach them how they can sustain themselves in the long, long run. So I've been involved in all of this, and I must say, life was going so well for me until COVID caught up with me. I thought I was strong. I was well built. I was doing well with my exercise routine. I was in the best shape ever. I really thought that nothing could touch me. And then COVID strikes. On the 22nd of January, 2021, I was rushed to a hospital with oxygen levels of 58%. Immediately as I got into casualty, the doctor says, you're going straight into intensive care unit and on a high flow oxygen. I looked at my wife, my son, they had tears in their eyes. And I said to them, 
I'm going to fight this, I'm going to pull through this. It was at that point that I chose to live. I tracked back my movements, trying to understand where I got this from, how did I get it? Because I was careful enough, and I was a COVID skeptic, right? I didn't believe this was real at all. I remember going to the gym, but I always had my mask on. I took the necessary precautions, etc. We used to walk every single day for 5Ks along the dam. The one thing I do remember, though, is while walking along the dam, I tasted some chemicals on my lips. And I thought nothing of it because the planes fly over that area before they land. And I know sometimes they dump fuel, etc. So I just wrote it off until for about eight days at home, I reached the point where I could not walk. I had a lot of pain, fever. I was sitting outside, crunched like this, almost like can't do anything at all, cannot work. And that's when my family decided they needed to rush me to hospital and put me into intensive care unit. I spent 13 days in the ICU. The trauma I experienced every single day was unbelievable. People were passing on, on a daily basis. And in front of me, I was looking at this. I was seeing them pass on. Every morning at 3.30 a.m., they used to come and take blood samples from this part of my hand. It's so painful on your wrist, but they had to do it to maintain or monitor my oxygen levels. I could not eat, me being the person that doesn't like to waste food. Every time they brought me meals and that I couldn't eat, they were dumping it because it's a COVID ward, it's ICU. They cannot give it to anyone. And I just thought, what a waste of food. I lost my independence. The nurses, they had to take care of me. They had to bathe me. And I've never been in a situation like this. I just felt so lost. But the love and support that I was getting from local community and global community was unbelievable. The prayers, the healings that were coming through was amazing. You know, the hospital, the frontline workers, I'm so thankful and grateful for them. I call them my earth angels because they go over and beyond just to make sure that you are fine, especially during this time. I was practicing my daily rituals like gratitude. Every single day when I woke up, I was grateful to see another day. I was grateful for the bed. I was grateful for my lounge chair. I was grateful for the doctors, the nurses, the medication. Although most of the medication was just vitamins, right? Because there was no cure for it. It was just vitamins. I practiced that. I started to visualize myself. I created this mental image in my mind of me walking out from ICU into the ward for a few days and then home with my family. I was meditating. I was healing myself. I was saying my daily prayers and mantras. I was getting verses, Christian verses, Muslim verses, Jewish verses, everything that came my way. I listened to every single one because I respect every single religion. I still believe there's one God, it's just different ways of believing. Imagine if everybody else thinks in my way. I was practicing this three scenes healing technique which allowed me to see myself come out of this. I was giving myself positive self-talk. Now, when you think of people talking to themselves, you think there's something wrong with them? No, I was positive self-talk all the time. It was helping me be the better person and come out. It carried on like this till about day six. And then I broke down. I got in touch with my family and I said, this is it. I can't do this anymore. I can't take it anymore. What triggered this? There was a doctor whose bed was opposite me. This is a doctor who's meant to be saving lives. He was in pain. He was calling out to die. And you know, he passed on after a few hours. And I broke down. I couldn't take it anymore. Like I said, I called my family and I said to them, this is it, I'm giving up. And they basically said, you know what? We know you can fight this. You are not gonna give up. We are not gonna allow you to give up. You just change your mindset, start getting yourself in order and start fighting this. My sister worked in the hospital. Somebody got the message to her. She came down and she looked at me and she said, what's going on? You need to snap out of this. I can't afford for you to be in, in this state of mind. I want you to get better. So snap out of it. So eventually I managed to get myself out of that pitiful state or the victim state. But look, I am human. I experience emotions, right? I'm allowed to. So that's what led to me breaking down. So eventually I started to the fight again. 
I started becoming stronger every single day up until 13 days later when I was discharged from ICU and put into the ward for two days until I could go home. And now I'm recovering at home. It's four months later, but I am recovering at home and I'm doing so much more better. And watch this space because I am making my comeback to be the best version of myself. Watch this space. It's been four months now since my COVID experience. And this is me, stronger than ever. How did I get here? Very simple. When we went into COVID, I started focusing much more on self-development because I knew that this is gonna help me to grow and mature as a person. So everything I learned in my self-development, I started to practice on myself. For example, I learned a healing method. So at one stage, when I was in hospital, I felt like something was eating through my body, eating through my flesh. This is when I went into a visualization and I sent in some soldiers to fight against us. The moment I started visualizing this and imagining my soldiers fighting my battle, this is when everything changed and I started to feel the pain get less and less all the time. So you see, my purpose is really bigger out there. I'm here to inspire the world. Now imagine and think about this for a second. We all do a lot of feeding to charities, etc. I also do that, but now I've got a different perspective. Instead of me feeding you for a day and allowing you to starve for the balance of the month, why don't I teach you how to fish so that you can sustain yourself and your family moving forward? and live a better life. So as a transformational coach, it's my job to transform lives and help you to transform your life and let you realize that you have a unique DNA within you. You have so much of potential within yourself. You just need to learn how to unleash this potential. So be the best version of yourself teaches you to be you, the best you, minus the filters that we all experience. Think about social media. What are people doing these days? They're using the filters to make themselves look like somebody they're not. And that really is dangerous. So I want to teach as many people as possible to just be yourself. And don't worry what society thinks about you. Be yourself, right? Learn to be this authentic person that you are. So I teach you about authentic leadership. Our youth has so much of potential, it's unbelievable. When I speak to them at the schools and universities, I see how much of potential they have within them. We just need to groom them based on our experience and what we've been through. We want to restore humanity at our company. We want to bring back the spirit of Ubuntu. I am because we are, right? We have so many ambitious entrepreneurs out there. The difference is a lot of them are jumping from one startup to the next because they have not found their purpose. Imagine if we teach them to learn to become businessmen based on their values and their mindset and their thought process and their purpose, how much more bigger it will be. Think about my moonshot. And I'll repeat it once again. My moonshot is basically to transform 1 million lives in Africa, starting with our teens and young adults by enhancing their mindset and thought process through our coaching and personal mastery programs. So look at me now. Four months, like I said, after COVID, I've got a new lease on life. I'm gonna live double my age. Why? Because my purpose is so much more bigger. I have so much more work I got to do out there as well. But hang 10, wait for a moment. There's more to come. I am not an author, but I did it anyway. I now call myself an author. I've done the first draft of my book on my COVID experience with the intention to help save lives out there. So the book will be launching soon and I'm looking forward to your support because it really is about saving lives. I'm willing to collaborate with anyone because I realize I cannot do this alone. I can go that far alone, but I can go much more further with a team or with other companies that have partnered with me. So it's time to invest in yourself. Contact me for more info. I would love to work with you. I would love to coach you. I would love to guide you based on my experience and my knowledge. I'm working with amazing people out there. For example, Bobby Layton, the lady from the Best You program. I'm doing this for her, I'm working with her. She's such an amazing person to work with. And that program is so awesome because it brings out the best within you. So all I'm saying is let's work together and change the way the world thinks. Join me in becoming the best version of yourself. 
I'd like you to stay in contact with me as well. My social handle is Straight Talk with Nolan. And more so, I would like to thank you for your time and for listening to me. And I hope and I know that I have inspired you today. Thank you.